Hi, hello. My name is Julia, and on this channel, I talk about books, art, and museums. And if this is something of your interest, maybe you can consider subscribing. This is going to be a really quick video because I actually need to pack my stuff because uh, tomorrow we're leaving. Uh, we're traveling to Armenia, actually, and uh, there I'll do my best and maybe find some interesting bookstores uh, and show you, of course. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so we need to pack. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to do before we leave. Uh, that's why I just want to shortly uh, let to let you know what I'm gonna read this month. Um, unfortunately, I'm not be able to read a lot uh, because again, I'm traveling and I'm meeting my family in Armenia. I would love to spend more time with them uh, rather than reading. But at the same time, traveling is a great excuse to read a book or two on the way to your destination and on the way back. That's why I'm going to take a couple of books with me. Probably not this one. So yeah, it's gonna be a really quick TBR and I want to begin with uh, uh, the book that I actually already started and it's called At the Existentialist Cafe, Freedom, Being and Apricot Cocktails by uh, Sarah Bakewell. As I already mentioned in my birthday book haul, I got it from my dear friends. I have started this book already and uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I really didn't know that the ideas that were developed a little bit early in the beginning of the 20th century, at the end of 19th century, by by mainly German uh, philosophers. They were very influential on the uh, thought of the French philosophers of the post-war era. I mean, I'm not surprised in general, of course, in philosophy it is uh, well interconnected and uh, all ideas are derived from, uh, you know, reflection on somebody else's ideas. That is true. Uh, it's just I really never connected those two and for me phenomenology was phenomenology and existentialists were existentialists basically. Okay, our vacation already started because my husband brought me uh, a little espresso martini. Ah, oh, that smells so good and fresh. I think it suits this book very much. This is a very existentialist cocktail, let's say. Anyways, cheers! I hope you're having actually a great uh, holiday season, uh, if you're celebrating anything in your country, um, I'm with you. Yeah, I will be taking this book with me uh, and I hope I'll finish it during one of the uh, long flights that are awaiting us. The next book I purchased last year uh, when I traveled to Berlin and it is The Pachinko Parola by Elisa Schuard du Sapin. Du Sapin? I think it is pronounced disappoint because it's French. Uh, so anyways, so it is the story of a girl named Claire and uh, her grandparents are owners of the pachinko parlor in Japan. Uh, the whole family is actually uh, from Korea and uh, uh, Claire herself uh, grows up in France and uh, she travels to Korea in order to explore her family and her past. As you <laughs> may assume, this is the book uh, right up my alley because I love family stories and family dramas. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna take it with me, but it is so beautiful. Look at this cover and the quality is really nice. So yeah, this uh, is also on my list. So yeah, let's continue with the Asian authors. Uh, no worries, I will have plenty of them, uh, plenty new Asian authors for the Asian Redathon in May. I am always up to read some of the Asian literature. So the next one in the list is Convenience to a Woman, I also mentioned in my birthday book haul um, by Sayaka Murata. I think for people who want to get acquainted with the contemporary Japanese literature, Sayaka Murata is a very obvious choice. Uh, she's one of the famous and influential uh, writers of our generation. So obviously um, I picked that up and uh, as I already told you, I'm really excited to read it. I'll definitely take it with me on uh, the flight because uh, it's very lightweight and I think I'll manage to finish it um, during my little trip. I also noticed that each month I have a book in Russian to read and usually I finish it. I think it is actually pretty nice tradition for me because, again, Russian is my mother tongue um, and I have plenty of literature uh, in Russian at home. Uh, so I decided for this uh, month my Russian book will be uh, Zulecha by Guzel Yechna. In English official translation it is called just simply Zuliha, but the original title goes Zuliha opens her eyes. So um, there is just this slight difference, I don't know why they made that difference. Um, anyways, 
I decided that this is a great pick, especially after the master and Margarita, because the events of this book take place in the 1930s, and it is a story about a peasant woman, uh, Zulikha, uh, who is traveling to the labor camp. I think she's sent to labor camp, so she needs to travel by this special train, and on this train she meets different people from around uh, the Soviet Union, uh, she meets intellectuals from Moscow and St. Petersburg, she meets uh, different peasants, wealthy peasants, we actually have a special name for them, kulaks, uh, she meets poor peasants, she meets convicted people, uh, people of different religions, uh, Christians, Muslims, um, atheists, everybody. I actually think that this is such a great idea to show us uh, the general historical event um, in this phenomenological way, because she'll describe different people and different experiences. She basically the slice of the society with all these different layers and pack it into one train and uh, explain their stories to us. This is what I expect, let's say, from this book. But of course, my expectations are nothing to reality, and we will see uh, in my wrap up video if uh, they were justified. So yeah, anyways, uh, Guzeli Akhina, Zuriha is my next trick this month. I also think that for me is a great timing because uh, I just read The Master and Margarita and I found interesting that in The Master and Margarita the events of the 1930s were described, let's say, metaphorically, uh, even satirically. Um, they were conveying the atmosphere, rather the events themselves, uh, whilst the contemporary author, Guzeli Akhina, is able to reflect on this history and uh, maybe write and emphasize some of the things that are important for our uh, generation. This is it for this book. I actually have a funny story how I obtained this specific copy. Uh, so when I was working in the museum in my hometown in Russia, uh, I actually was helping to organize one of the events. So this event is called Total Dictation, I think. <laughs> Now, I, when I pronounce it in English, uh, it explains a lot, I think, why we're so. Everything is total and everything is dictation. Anyways, by dictation I mean a spelling test, of course. And this is what usually school children do in the schools. They would attend uh, Russian language classes and they would, uh, you know, have a spelling test when the teacher is dictating the text and they just, you know, write it down. And uh, so one of the academics in my city, they invented this total dictation or a total um, spelling test and they organize it every year and basically a lot of people everybody who wants uh, they join this event and they sit and they write down uh, on the paper this spelling text and usually there is a, a guest reader who reads an excerpt from the literary work uh, sometimes contemporary sometimes classics it doesn't matter and uh, when they do that so the participants just uh, write it down and then afterwards um, academics and philologist, they uh, check out the text and basically it's a competition and whoever is the best in the spelling test, uh, this person, I don't know, wins some prizes if I'm not mistaken. I really don't remember and I never participated myself. I'm so insecure in uh, my Russian language. But anyways, uh, so I was helping to organize it in our museum and uh, um, because of that I got this free copy <laughs> as a gift because the, the year I was helping them they were reading an excerpt uh, from this book. So yeah, uh, this is a just a fun story of how I got this copy. I actually still have some thank you notes on this book, <laughs> like for organizing this thing. Anyways, and the last book uh, in April is going to be the book that I wanted to read for such a long time. And it is called Fire in the Belly uh, by Cynthia Carr. Basically, it is a biography of David Vinarovich. Uh, David Vinarovich was, a, let's say, modern artist um, in the 20th century. He is one of the pioneers of performance, video art, conceptual art. Um, and uh, his life is also a uh, a life of a struggle and activism. He was also one of the people, if not actually the main organizer, of the foundation that would support people who, who were struggling AIDS or who got AIDS. And uh, we're talking again uh, the crisis of the 1970s, the time when he was uh, working and living. I learned about this book when I was reading The Lonely City by Olivia Lang. It's such a great book actually, if you haven't read it 
please do because、um, that is like really one of my favorite books of all times. So, anyways,、uh, and she mentions the、uh, biographer of David Vinerovich,、uh, Cynthia Carr. So I put this book on my <laughs> TBR list, let's say, or my wish list. And only recently I found it on the website Better World Books. So I immediately purchased that. So as you can see, it's actually a formal library copy. There is still this little cover, and there's、uh, there was a library sticker that I actually. Uh, torn off because、um, yes, I don't I don't like them. But anyways, it's a book with a history. I remember a couple of years ago when we traveled to Luxembourg, I was first of all surprised that Luxembourg is such an Art friendly city, and secondly, there was an exhibition, a retrospective exhibition of David Vinerovich's、uh, work. I was astounded by his creativity and innovation at the time when he was living. He is one of my favorite, let's say, artists. Although I'm sure he's not that famous, as for example、uh, Andy Warhol,、uh, who also lived and worked、uh, in New York at that time. Uh, so yeah, I am really happy that I picked this book. That is all for my TBR list. As you can see, it's very short again because I I'm not sure I'll be able to read more. But no worries, if I finish all of them, I still have plenty to read. I will let you know in my wrap up video if I extended my TBR list to a couple of more books or not.、Uh, but yeah, so far so good. So I really need to go, and、uh, I'll leave you to that. Thank you very much for joining me. And、uh, let me know in the comments what you. Think of my little selection. Have you heard of these books? What do you think of them? And、uh, would you love to read any of them? Anyways, I'll see you very, very soon in Yerevan, Armenia. Cheers.